Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? You know, whenever we talk Saints, everyone knows how I feel. You know how I feel about now about Dennis Allen. You know how I feel about Derek Carr. You know how I feel about the, the state of the organization. There is no, there is zero ambiguity. Nobody should be confused about my feelings about the New Orleans Saints. So I'm not going to sit here and just belabor the point of how I feel. You know how I feel. Dennis Allen is a lieutenant, not a general. Great defensive mind. Terrible head coach. Derek Carr at his absolute best. Borders on a top 10 quarterback in the NFL, but he's nowhere near his best. He is not even close to that, as a matter of fact. And I think the Saints are going to miss the playoffs for the fourth consecutive year. You know how I feel. What I'm going to do throughout this offseason is continue to point out third-party and objective uh, rankings, data, metric, numbers that speak to this Saints team for 2024. And this is something that, that popped up last week. Pro Football Focus is going through their position rankings. So they're ranking the players by position in the NFL. And I, I intended to get to this last week, and it just it slipped through the cracks. But I want to circle back to it now because PFF released their quarterback ranking. So they ranked all 32 starters ahead of the NFL season. Number one on the list is no surprise. It's, it's Patrick Mahomes. We all know that. Mahomes is number one. And number two is is Lamar Jackson. So you got a couple of MVPs right there. Mahomes is is alone at one. Lamar Jackson two. There's Joe Burrow at number three. So tons of respect for Burrow there, even despite his injury plagued early career. Four is Josh Allen. Uh, five uh, Justin Herbert with the Chargers. Dak Stafford. Aaron Rodgers. Hurts at nine. And rounding out the top ten is C.J. Stroud after his magnificent rookie season. So that's your top ten. Clearly, Derek Carr, not in the top 10. I'm not going uh, to bury the lead. Um, number 20 is Baker Mayfield on this list. And then one spot after Baker Mayfield is where we find Derek Carr, who is one spot ahead of Russell Wilson. So 2021-22 is Mayfield, Derek Carr, Russell Wilson. Your starting quarterback is sandwiched between Baker Mayfield and Russell Wilson, who Denver just ate, what, $70 million to get rid of him? You're one tick ahead of that guy, according to Pro Football Focus. Now, I'm going to be honest. Again, I say it all the time. Pro Football Focus is not the metric. It's a metric. It's something to be considered. It's not the be-all, end-all of all these metrics. Now, what was really interesting to me is who else was after Derek Carr. Let's run through the list. Russell Wilson at 22. Deshaun Watson at 23. Anthony Richardson. Bryce Young. Uh, the combination of Jacoby Brissett and Drake May. Jaden Daniels at 27, rookie. Will Levis at 28, second-year player. Daniel Jones at 29, ugh. Aiden O'Connell, Garner Minshew for the Raiders at 30. 31 is J.J. McCarthy, Sam Darnold with the Vikings. And dead last, Jarrett Sid and Bo Nix with the Broncos. That enormous pile of average to suck is the only thing separating Derek Carr with the bottom of the league. Of the remaining 11 quarterbacks, eight are either for rookies or second-year players, and the other three are Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, and Daniel Jones. That's what the metrics say about your starting quarterback. It's almost unfathomable to think that the New Orleans Saints have invested $150 million guaranteed into Derek Carr. So I got to thinking. Four years, $150 million with $100 million guaranteed? How else could you blow $100 million? Yeah, had $100 million burning a hole in your pocket. You could spend it on Derek Carr. Or you know what you could do? Do what Steve Wynn did. You know, Wynn Hotels. Wynn bought a $100 million home in Aspen. Gorgeous property, by the way. I don't know. That seems a lot better than Derek Carr. Put a car in the many garages. 
at the home there in Aspen for, for Steve Wynn. Speaking of cars, Muse, would you drive a Lamborghini? I would, yeah, 100%. Lamborghinis cost 229k. You know what that means, Muse? Uh, it means you could buy 436 Lamborghinis. That's what you could do with $100 million. You know what you could do, Muse? You could get every member of the Saints team. Mrs. B could have bought every member of the Saints team nine Lambos. Everybody, one to 53. Everybody gets nine Lambos. That's what you could do that would with help $100 million. Morale. You into art? Not really. No, not really into art? You ever heard of Picasso? I've heard of him, though, yeah. Yeah, Pablo Picasso has a painting called uh, La Pin Agile. I think I said that right. Maybe not. That thing's valued at $100 million from 1904. You could buy a Picasso from 1904 for $100 million, Muse. You could do that. Or you could set a match to $100 million and sign Derek Carr. How about this? You into sports memorabilia? Yeah, I like that a lot. What's your favorite piece of sports memorabilia? Like, of my own? Yeah, yeah, uh, let me just, know. So, some signed baseballs that I have, for awesome. sure. Awesome, sounds great. The top 10 pieces of sports memorabilia of all time. 1952 Mickey Mantle card, $12.6 million. The 1998 Michael Jordan NBA Finals Bulls jersey, $10 million. A Diego Maradona Hand of God jersey, $9.3 million. That's an ad that just rolled through. The Olympic Games Manifesto, $8.8 million. A Messi uh, match war- World Cup match-worn shirt, $7.8 million. The Honus Wagner T206, $7.25. A 1914 Babe Ruth rookie, $7.2. Ali's Rumble in the Jungle Belt, $6.2. Kobe Bryant's 2007-2008 Lakers jersey, $5.8. And a Ruth jersey from 1928 at $5.6 million. The top 10 most valuable pieces of mem- sports mem- memorabilia ever used. You could buy them all mm. and still have $19.4 million left. That's what you could do. You know what else you could do? What else you into could you the, do? You into the WNBA there, Muse? Not really. Oh, you should be. Okay. You know the, the, the chick that hip-checked Caitlin Clark that everybody's all pissed off about? Yeah. You know who she plays for? The Chicago Sky. Yep. You could buy the entire Chicago Sky organization for $85 million. You could buy the you could buy the team, Muse. Wow. Mrs. Benson could Mrs. B could buy the team and have fifteen million dollars left over. Buy a few Lambos with that. Good. Or some of that sports memorabilia. Good. Or you could set it on fire by signing Derek Carr to a hundred million dollar contract. That's what you could do. You could. Got a few other ideas for you. All right. My wife's the biggest Swifty in the world. Yeah, you, you know said what that. I might be able to do? What's that? How about a private Taylor Swift concert? Ooh. Can I bring Tay Tay to the house? Have her playing a little acoustic set out back by the pool? She'd probably do that for 100 mil. 100 mil? Yeah, probably. Get E Rock and maybe one or two friends out there. Invite my nieces. They think I'm the coolest in the world, if that were the case. Yeah. Maybe. I don't I, know. I, I think she'd do that for 100 mil. Remember that movie, uh, National Treasure, where Nicolas Cage stole the Declaration of Independence? <laughs> yeah, dude. 100 million bucks. Yeah. You could bankroll the third sequel of that awful yeah. movie series. Hey, you know how they've been talking about that stupid train to go from Baton Rouge to New Orleans for like a decade? Maybe yes. two decades? And hey, we're going to build a commuter train. You know, so you don't have to drive down I-10. You don't have to go over the, over the, the spillway. No, don't yeah. worry about that. Just get on this train right between Baton Rouge and New Orleans. 100 million bucks. Build that thing. We can build that line. That would actually be a productive way to contribute to our society. That wouldn't be more expensive than 100 million? Work with me, Muse. All right. Sorry. 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 Hey, remember that home I told you about in Aspen? Yeah. Steve Wynn's home? I do. How, you know, remember where Dumb and Dumber was shot, don't I you? I do. Where was it? Aspen. A little place called Aspen. The- How about you go spend a weekend with Lloyd Christmas and Harry Dunn? I'm in. Handing out hundred dollar, handing out hundos as tips to everybody. How about that? Here you go. Uh, Wiping your nose at the Bell South commercial with hundred dollar bills as tissues. Uh, you can do that. You know what else you can do? What's that? You can sign Bobby Bonilla to a one hundred year contract. <laughs> oh man, Bobby Bonilla catching strays still. That's not a stray. The Mets are catching the stray. That's fair. Bonilla's brilliant. But he hadn't played a baseball game in, what, 20 years? He still gets a million bucks a year because of the way he negotiated his deal. That's brilliant by Bobby Bonilla. He took the annuity instead of giving me, he said, don't give me the lump sum. Give me the annuity. Gets a million bucks a year forever. Sign Bobby Bonilla to a 100-year contract with $100 million. That's what you could do. Or 
you could sign Derek Carr. You know what? Tell you one thing, though. One of the quarterbacks that Derek Carr is ahead of, Deshaun Watson, who the Browns paid $230 million to. Cleveland. I guess it could be worse. You could be Cleveland. Cleveland's the anus of America. It's the booty. Thank you, Channing Crowder. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.